Hey what it's Emily welcome back to my channel for another video and this time around we are going over a wooden jigsaw puzzle brand that I was able to experience. I work with Puzzle Warehouse if you are new to this channel and I was given the opportunity to write a blog post for Victory Puzzles. They are a wooden puzzle brand that was originated like a hundred years ago. They stopped production in the 80s and then they were revived in 2022 and so they are now a laser cut wooden puzzle brand. They used to be a hand cut wooden puzzle brand but things have changed and we have three here today that I will go over. I thought it would be fun to just show you these puzzles since I had them. These were gifted to me by Victory Puzzles and if you are wanting to see the blog post and learn a little bit more of its history I'll link it down below. I wanted to just give you my honest review and opinion and just show you the ones that I have so that's what we're doing here today. Um, so let's just go over the three puzzles that I have on hand. I did not choose these images. These were gifted to me. I do feel like I would have chose a few other images instead, but in general, these were super fun to put together and I'm excited to share them with you. So the two that I did off camera, but I have a ton of pictures of, we first have this one called Cafe Terrace at Night. This is a 250 piece puzzle and here is the image and then i have this one which is called winter garden robin this one is 238 pieces and we have that one there and then the one that i will do on camera it's called the flapper and it's from life 1922 so this was actually a magazine cover from life magazine around the same time period and i will just go over each of these puzzles with you a little bit of its history and we're just going to get into this so i hope you enjoy it so first let's start off with packaging if you have tried a victory puzzle in the past you may notice that it's a bit different they did change all their packaging to what they called gold box so it's this really sturdy cardboard box there's a magnetic closure here and in general it's just supposed to be like a very beautiful display you can put it on a coffee table put it on a bookcase we have a little picture of the image here it's 250 pieces this one is called the flapper life 1922 and when i was researching for the blog post for puzzle warehouse i learned that they decided to go with this image because it's the same year that the brand was founded originally so they wanted to do something a little nostalgic and what's really cool is that the whimsy pieces or the figure pieces that are in here are all either fashions or inventions from the same time period so I just think it's cool that they kind of thought it through and then if you see there's like this piece here inside the actual cover this is just a duplicate the other side is just like wood as well but every single puzzle has this V for victory piece so this is something they started in 1941 so every single puzzle has this piece and the goal is for that to be the final piece that you put into the puzzle as just an extra little challenge so let's go into the inside of the box because there's also a lot of information here so here is the inside we have this nice paper to keep the puzzle pieces secure we also as you can see this is the duplicate piece there um, it has a little bit about the branding and actually talks about this piece also and just some QR codes for their socials so let's move into the pieces because that's a whole other story so here are the pieces for this one and for this puzzle they are on the more whimsy side so we have some more like triangle shaped pieces we have some standard looking pieces a lot of them are like this where they're like somewhat traditional but they're definitely a unique cut and every single puzzle has a different cut design which is kind of cool um, some definitely are more tricky than others this one I think is a pretty standard one um, but the one for the garden puzzle it was really interesting because they had the V cut shapes so it's the ones that have like an interlocking that's like a V or a three. Um, oh, similar to this one so that's something that you often see in a hand cut wooden puzzle so it's kind of cool that they kind of brought that aspect to the laser cut design um, also they have a ton of whimsy or figurine pieces so each puzzle has about 20 but some of them are actually multiple parts so I'll show you some that are in this design so first up we have a flapper girl again all of the 
whimsy cuts are like from the, the time period. Um, we also have some inventions. So we have this little microphone. I have a stopwatch. And then some things are um, multiple pieces. So this one here that is a car is actually two separate pieces. Same with this Victrola. I have the, the top part of it, but the bottom part is, is somewhere amongst the mix. So um, I think this is going to be a super fun image. Um, so far, I haven't had any issues with the pieces themselves. So it seems really nice. Um, also, they are five millimeters thick, which is actually quite thick for a laser cut puzzle. Normally they're around three to four. This one is five. And as you can see, you can actually see the la layers, which is really, really cool. Um, also, I just wanted to mention in case you've done wooden puzzles in the past that are laser cut, you'll notice that there is that like burnt wood smell. But I'm going to do this puzzle on camera so you guys can see the process, but I'll also show some pictures of the other ones that I've done because they're all just a little bit different. So let's just get into the puzzle. Here is the final image, which was so much fun to put together. I was nervous because there's so much white around the border, but I ended up just following the puzzle piece shape and that just helped me so much, especially if you had a whimsy cut, you could tell which ones were like next to it. So it actually was a lot easier than I was expecting. Now I want to go into a couple things that I noticed that you might not enjoy. The first one being that you may run into false fists just because the little connectors may be quite similar similar, um, especially if you have the ones that are the V's, they do kind of all go together. So you just need to pay attention to the rest of the P shape. And for me, that wasn't such a big deal because it just made for more puzzling time, but I could see it being frustrating if this is a style of puzzle that you're not used to. Also, I did want to mention, I did have one issue with a piece, which was this lady right here. She does seem to have a bit of her image broken off of her head. So I do want to mention that because it is a little flaw in it. So for me, I did really enjoy it. I do like the thickness of the pieces. I like that there are different piece shapes. I like the whimsy shapes, especially the ones that you kind of like are building. Um, I feel like there's a good variety of them. They're all super cute. And in general, I really like this one, along with the other two, which I'm sure I'm putting on the screen so you can see the other ones that I did. I will say the one that was the Cafe Terrace puzzle I absolutely loved it was like a really good difficulty it was definitely on the, the challenging side for me image wise but it was just so much fun to put together and I love the whimsy shapes in that one too so 
I have enjoyed all three of these and I would consider purchasing more. Um, I'd be curious to see if anything else has a quality issue. Of the three puzzles, this is the only one that I've had that experience with. So I just want to be completely honest with you of what I've experienced. Um, I do still think it was a great puzzle to do and I had a really good time. All right, now that we are back, I'm just going to go over a little bit of a recap. First up, love these. They were super fun to put together. I feel like you'll be frustrated if you are someone who doesn't want zero false fits because you are going to experience that. But I feel like it's almost kind of similar. They're taking some aspects from hand cut puzzles and putting it into their laser cut puzzles. So for instance, those V shapes is something that I've seen in hand cut puzzles and you do experience a little bit of a false fit because it's the same cut for that style of piece. And so it could be frustrating if you are new to this style of a puzzle cut, but for me, it wasn't a big deal because I feel like the ones that I had accidentally put together you would have obviously see that they didn't go well together. So I can see it being frustrating, but for me, I didn't mind it too much. Um, also the little bit of a hiccup as far as quality goes, that was such a unfortunate incident with this one where I had one piece that was damaged. Um, again, you may be able to just reach out to them and let them know, but I wanted to let you know that because that's what I experienced. But in general, I do feel like these are really good puzzles and it's definitely a great option for a laser cut wooden puzzle. They're definitely on the thicker side than other brands. So they use a five millimeter board where a lot of laser cut brands only do a three or a four. So I've done a lot of other wooden puzzle brands like Anthology, Wentworth, um, Zen Puzzles. I'm trying to look at the other brands, Unidragon. And this one definitely has the thickest of the pieces. So it definitely feels different. It feels nice. They feel high quality. Um, and hopefully you don't have any issues as far as the, the pieces go. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you are interested in reading the blog, again, I'll link it down below when it comes available. But that's it for me. I hope you have a good day and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye guys.